Hey, Sally. Come here, Sally. How's my baby, huh? It's been a long road for Sally. A year-old Saluki pup found wandering months ago in the Kuwaiti desert with a missing foot. You want to go for a walk? Her injuries were so severe that doctors recommended amputating her leg. Come on, Sally. But Dr. Eric Egger of Colorado State University's veterinary school thought she'd be a perfect candidate for his prosthetic work on dogs. Come on, Sally. Got to go to work. She's shown us a lot about uh, wanting to use legs, I'll tell you that. She pushes, and every chance she gets, she'll find something to go up so she can get that leg to the ground. And then she really pushes off with it. We could remove the leg, but it certainly looks to me like she's volunteering to help, uh, you know, to give us some knowledge. Ready? Until now, amputating a limb and letting dogs get by on just three legs was standard operating procedure. But, it looks like what but these the days, cutting-edge research off. is helping animals the... like Sally. Sally, you ready? Why don't you get up and walk around for a minute, huh? She's Sally's like... new prosthetic is an interim step to encourage her to use her disabled leg. Okay. So you're gonna just slide that in gently. Okay. Then you've got your suspension and rotation. So her knee moves good, her yep. hip moves good. Yep. You ready? Once she builds up some strength in her leg, she'll be considered for a more radical treatment, a prosthetic foot attached directly to a titanium rod that's implanted in her leg bone. Up and let's get him fitted. I mean, I want and each breakthrough is inspiring others. Perhaps the most revolutionary work in the area of animal prosthetics is that of Denver, Colorado veterinary surgeon Dr. Bob Taylor and his colleagues at VCA Alameda East Hospital. 37 years of uh, being a veterinary surgeon, I've just seen so many animals that uh, have either suffered needlessly or we weren't able to adopt modern technology. And, and in the last, well, in, in my lifetime, that's changed. We've been able to take current, contemporary, state-of-the-art technology and use it for the betterment of animals. Scout, who got hit by a car, is one of several dogs with customized porous metal rods in their legs. Bone and soft tissue grow into the implants and anchor them. Painful skin irritations and infections from socket prosthetics are therefore eliminated, and animals may even be able to sense their foot through the bone. This was Scout's initial injury on the right leg where the distal feet had been ground away in the pavement. In our planning process, we planned on amputating him about right here uh, through his distal tibia, which we did. These are our post-operative films showing the implant. This is up inside of the bone. This, the bone comes down and it resides in this collar, and then the skin comes down and is attached down below right here. So this is his uh, post-operative leg immediately after the surgery. It's trial and error. Basically, his knee needs to be sitting about like this. Anyway. But well, prosthetist well, Ben Blakey, fine. an amputee himself, hopes that prosthetics that attach to implants will give patients better mobility and more energy. All of a sudden, you have a leg that's actually a part of your body. You, you get a walk, and you don't have to worry about the leg rubbing a sore on your leg because it's actually held there. Uh, and your energy expenditure is way down, so then you can go hike farther. Uh, so if we can also change this over to work with humans, then how much further are we ahead? Okay, come on, Sally, let's go, let's go. Sally is just beginning the journey that will lead to her implant. Let's go. Ready? In a gate laboratory, her doctors analyze how she's walking on her new limb. She's touching it, but she's not bearing any weight on it. She's using it for balance, not for propulsion. So our goal is to get a prosthetic that she will use for propulsion. They'll play with it and try different foot attachments and lengths until they get it where the machine says she's bearing the most weight. So that's just Sally's prosthetist, Martin Kaufman, envisions a day when advances in technology will allow two- and four-legged animals the flexibility to run, jump, play, and short. feel whole again. So when we get to learn how best to use that terminal device with an implantable uh, prosthetic, uh, that technology opens so many doors 
for kids, for adults in the human world. Not to have to deal with the socket. Just click on a leg and out you go. Okay, Sally, come on. Let's go. Come on. What I'm excited about is return to function. Because when I see Sally running around in the mountains and I do see her when she jumps over logs and she puts her leg to the ground, she wants to use it and play and function better. And that's what I'm hoping the prosthesis will do for us. Come on, baby. Let's go. Let's go walk on it a little. Well, new today at 5, a three-legged dog. Yeah, a little puppy beating the odds and warming hearts every day with an amazing show of confidence and speed. 7 Action News reporter Kimberly Craig has the story tonight. This is Willow, a lab mix born with a limb deformity. Too often, dogs like Willow are simply put down. But Debbie Harrison contacted her husband, an army man serving in Afghanistan, and told him about Willow, the three-legged pup who needed a home. When we saw her, you know, just like, we got to take her. She's, she's such a cutie. Willow is an active puppy, and the Harrisons were not ready to do what so many people suggested, amputate the deformed leg. Their vet told them about positive steps, rehabilitation, and therapy for pets in Rochester Hills. And look at Willow now. She got her prosthetic leg a couple weeks ago, just in time for Christmas. As you can see, she's running around like she's had it for uh, her whole life. Ready? There you go. You know, being in the military, I've seen lots of soldiers coming home from Iraq and Afghanistan that are missing limbs. So it wasn't weird for me to see something like that you know, and, and to adjust to it. It's like, I know people that have no problems with the prosthetic legs and limbs and stuff. Dr. Terry Kern and her team work with Willow and outfitted her with her custom prosthetic. And she says it's an alternative to amputation. If they can leave, um, you know, a couple of inches below the elbow and we can have something to strap it on, we can have a device that it's kind of like Willow's, where she gets the use of a leg back. Three-legged dogs do well, but why not work towards great? And pretty soon, little Nima here will be able to keep up with the likes of Willow. I started crying. I just wanted her so bad. She's so cute. I didn't even know a place like this existed. We don't have to rest quite as often. We can go to the park. We run through the fields. We run through the woods. We run down the trails. And she has that extra stability and support. And with the help of positive steps, Willow won't be slowing down anytime soon. Uh, kids are all grown up and gone, so this is our baby now. <laughs> In Rochester Hills, Kimberly Craig, 7 Action News. Yeah, he is.